Hi guys, it's Sherry. So today we are going to be making some earrings and all I did was I took some old scrap clay and I mixed it together and I got this pretty cool like gray color but we're gonna cover it up with these beautiful mica powders that I got from Create Along and I really wanna show you guys how you can take this old gray used up clay and make it into something beautiful. So I just have some bird cutters and I just have my saran wrap because I noticed that anytime you use cutters that have like a lot of detail in them, using saran wrap over them really helps prevent them from sticking inside the clay cutter. So just take your um, cutters and just cut out a pair of earrings here. And actually, I'm going to make two because I want to try something. Okay. And then let's just pull. Oops. There we go. Pull that up. Put that off to the side. I'm gonna get my tissue blade and just pull up all my clay here. And then I'm just gonna kinda push the edges in and clean this up a little. And then when you clean, when you do this, by cleaning it up, it saves you a lot of time from sanding. All right, so I have this really beautiful red mica powder and this gorgeous blue, which really reminds me of like a peacock blue. It's so pretty. So we're gonna use this one as well. And then this green, it's almost like a gold green. It's really nice, I like it a lot. I was playing around with this one earlier. So just get a paintbrush and I think I'm gonna make the main part of the bird blue. Look at that color. I mean, look how gorgeous, look how pretty that blue came out. Just absolutely beautiful. So I just want to kind of almost paint these pieces. And I like how I, well, if you use this like flat edge brush, you could really kind of stop where you want to. So I really enjoy using these type of brushes when I'm playing with my mica powder. Okay, so now I'm gonna do my red next. I'm gonna go right on the edge. I really wish you guys could see how beautiful these colors are in person. I mean, so, so beautiful. I'm just kinda kinda follow this down a bit. You could really do this any color. This is just my um, idea for today. And I'm gonna take my green right away. I'm gonna go right in the middle here. Look at that. How beautiful from this gray, muddy, old clay to this gorgeous, gorgeous bird. How beautiful is that? And then if you want, you could get more of a detailed brush. So one that has like a finer tip and we can actually go in and we can detail 
with this mica powder and just go right along the little lines from our cutter. And can you see that? All that little tiny bit of detail. I just love these colors. They are so, so beautiful. And they're really simple to work with. Okay, so now I'm gonna play around and do this, do the rest of them. And what you could do is once they're all done, let me see here, just get a brush and you could kind of just lightly, very lightly, just brush off any of the excess mica powder. What I really like about this is you do not need a lot. So this little tiny container is really going to take you and let you do a lot of projects. All right, guys, look how beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. So my last step is I'm going to take these off and then I am going to carefully just do the backs. And I'm going to do these on the back, just all blue. So just carefully go right over them. They come up, they become a little slippery. Oops. And the reason I don't do the backs first is because they slide once the mica powder is on. So as I'm doing the more detailed stuff on the front, I don't want my pieces sliding. So I'll do the mica powder on the back last. And look how beautiful. That color is so, so pretty. I'm gonna try to not get this on. Let me wipe my hand. I don't want that blue mica powder to go on the front of my piece. So I gotta be careful. This mica powder, look at that. How gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Now I can see I got a little bit of blue on my pink, so or on my red. So I'm just going to go right over it again, right over the little areas to make sure that everything stays the color that I want it to stay. So just do a quick little touch up. So once you're really happy with your piece, put all your mica powders carefully off to the side because you don't want them to spill. Just put your lid right on right away. And then we will put this in our oven at 275 because my, my clay is Primo clay. So if you have another um, clay that is not Primo, just follow your package directions. But I have my Primo clay, so I'm going to put it in 275 for a full half hour, and then we'll come back and we'll finish these up. All right, guys, so my pieces are out of the oven, and I did put my UV resin on this particular one, and I just did the front so far, but look how beautiful. Talk about absolutely stunning. How gorgeous is that? Those mica powders really just brought this piece to life. Now, I didn't do that side yet, but here's without the mica, or here's without the resin, and here's with. So, what I'm going to do is I actually decided I am going to attempt to make a necklace using these pieces. So, I have this really cool jersey stone. And I really want to kind of incorporate it, something like that. So I'm going to play around with this and see 
what I can do with this. And I'm kind of thinking just doing a clay slab. So I have something like this, okay? So my idea is thinking I could take like this clay slab here. Let me, here, let me roll this out quick. So I have my clay. Put that out, okay. So I'm thinking we could put this kind of like in the middle here. And of course I'll build up around that. And then put these little characters here. Something around, like around. Something like that. And then of course I would edge that off and edge that off. So I'm thinking something like that maybe would look really neat. I like that. And of course we can decorate it and stuff like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. So that to me, I just want to make sure. Let me cut them off like that. So it's kind of, oops. All right, let me redo that. All right, so we have, let me roll this out again. All right, but that kind of gives you the idea of what I want to play around with. So that's my thought. So let me roll this out and we'll see what we can create. All right, so I have my little slab here. I'm just gonna cut that out first. I'm gonna bring this closer to me. And I'm actually gonna lay it right here so I know exactly where my middle point is. Because I wanna make sure my middle is exactly where I need it to be. So I'm gonna put my stone right in the middle you can see here, like it has like a lot of hollow in it. So we need to build up underneath that. So I just want to stick some clay underneath. And we're not going to push down because this clay is only rolled out to my thickest setting. So if we push that down, we'll actually put holes on the back of that. So we do not want to do that. So we just want to carefully start building up around this. And we're going to do quite a bit of blending. So this way it all kind of goes into each other. So I'm just going to take my blending tool. This is like a nail tool. And I'm just going to blend that right into my bottom piece of clay here. Initially, I was not planning on doing this, but it popped into my head and I thought that would, this would be a really cool idea. So I'm going to get another piece and kind of roll it out and just fill up the other side here. And we want to blend that all together. You see how when you blend it, it all becomes one piece of clay. I love how 
you could do so many things with clay. Oh, I just, I love clay. Okay, now I'm just gonna put a tiny piece in the front here. Do the same thing. Nothing has to be perfect right now. And I really love to use my fingers for a lot of my projects. I just feel like I have more control, but because this stone is kind of sharp and it's kind of hard to get in there, so I have to use my blending tool. All right. And then let's get an idea of how I want to place these. See, do I do that? Let's see here. That'll keep it even. And I feel like I need something here. I just don't know what I want to put there. Maybe some flowers would be nice because we got our birds, so we could do some flowers and vines. That would look really pretty. So let's try some vines. And I'm gonna leave my birds right where they are right now, but I don't wanna play with them too much because the more you touch them, you're gonna smear your mica powder. So you do not want to go crazy with touching them. So you know what, let me actually take these ones off so we're not touching them too much. And these guys we could use because we are a UV dim. Or we are, a, <laughs> we are a UV dim, we are a resin dim. So let's do that. And I want this up a little bit further. I am a stickler with trying to keep everything even. I don't know why. It's a real bad thing of mine. Um, all right. So I will just take this and let's start making some branches and vines. And if we don't like them, we could take them right off. You really get to see me today kind of start from scratch because um, this is kind of how my mind works. I start with one idea. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make some bird earrings. And I knew I wanted to do something to kind of incorporate with earrings, but I didn't know what. And this is how my mind goes. I'm just like, well, Let's try a necklace, and next thing you know, now I have a whole nother project that I'm working on. There we go. So with this, I just want you, if you're going to make this, you know, just make, just add little pieces of clay. Because you can see here how these little pieces of clay now are becoming like a tree. I do want to take this off and make this thinner because I feel like that's a little fat for what I'm doing right now. But I kind of have a mark, like you can see where the clay was laying. So I'll be able to put that right back to where it was. So let's go skinnier since all my other pieces are skinnier. Oh, let's just follow that area. So all our little branches will still connect. And I'm 
gonna have it go off like that. Okay, so that I like a lot. Let's add another thin one there. Oh, this is coming together beautiful. Isn't that amazing how you could come, you really don't have a idea and you get this gorgeous thing just by playing around. I really encourage whoever's watching this video to just really just play around with your clay. Have fun with it because you will be very surprised on what you can create just by playing around. Let's pull that off to the side. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there because I really like the look of just that. So I want to, I have these really cool flower molds that I just want to see if I can make something with them. Let's see, what can we come up with? And I know I want tiny flowers. So, let's see here. These are real small. So we could come up with something with those ones. Or we could just go with plain little tiny blossoms. I like the little blossoms. Let's go with those ones. So I'm gonna take my clay and I am just going to fill this up. Now, what I really like about this particular mold is if you look on this side, you can see if you if it's not filled or not. Because sometimes with these molds, you miss stuff. And with this particular one, you can see everything. So I really enjoy working with this one. because I want just the flower. I don't want everything else. There we go. So it's just sticking to my finger is what it's doing. Ooh, that was some thunder. Holy cow. You see how that makes such a pretty, pretty flower. But I got to get that to stay in there so I could cut it off and just get the flower. So, okay, so let's see what we can get out of this when I slice it. Hopefully those tiny ones will stay and I could just pull them out. So the very, very tiny ones are like super hard to get to. So I don't know if it would be worth it unless I figure out another way of, see how they kind of crumble? So I don't know if I'm gonna waste my time. Even though I really like the idea, again, those real tiny ones, I don't know if I would waste my time working with them. just seems like a lot of effort for very little. But these guys are going to be really nice. There we go. Okay. So let's take these and just set these Right on here. And that's. Oops. These are going to be so pretty. 
I'm like super happy about this. But I have to take a break because my blood sugar is starting to slowly drop and I can feel myself getting shaky. So I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to go take care of that situation. And then we'll come back and finish this gorgeous necklace. All right, so now I feel like a normal person again, and I am loving how this is coming out. So now I just wanna finish and basically do the same concept on the other side. right there oh these are so i love these flowers these molds are so cool now i will say definitely was not worth trying to do this little tiny tiny one seemed more of a headache to me <clears throat> seemed more of a headache to me than it was honestly worth but for these i am really pleased with how nice these are coming out they really do look like these real pretty blossoms that would be on a tree. And I am not one that really knows how to make flowers. No matter how much I kind of try, my flowers just never come out pretty. Some people just have such talent when it comes to that. And I am not one of those people. I am a, let's use a mold because my flowers look terrible. I guess if I probably put like some um, practice into it, I'd probably get better at it. But I have so many other things that go into my head that it doesn't seem worth the time when we have easy ways out like these molds. <laughs> so it doesn't seem worth it to me. Let's see here. Uh, I don't want to put too many. I feel like, hmm. Would that be too many? Yeah. All right, we'll double up on that little section. I am so pleased with this. This came out really, really pretty. Really pretty, and I'm not even done. All right, so now I'm gonna take off these birds because these guys are gonna be my earrings. And these guys are gonna go on there. So I'm gonna get my, let's see. I, I have my, look at this bottle, it's terrible. <laughs> my clay adhesive. And I'm just going to put it on the back of this. Since I have the mica powder on, if I knew I was making this necklace, I would not have put the mica powder on the back of it. But since the mica powder is on, and my clay is baked, I want to make sure that it's going to stay on. So I'm gonna put my clay adhesive on there and just press this little guy down. And we'll do the same thing. And I like that um, the mica powder was on these because it kind of left a mark exactly where I should put these little guys. All right, so now I'm gonna bring out my mica powder again because I want to finish up this necklace with mica powder. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is take this off and put this on one of my mats. Okay, carefully make sure it's flat. And I am going to lay this over again. Oh no, I can't. The rock is too big. Okay. Now I gotta use my blade to clean it up. Okay. I just want to clean up the edges here a bit.
Okay, so now make sure everything is nice and smooth and exactly how you want it. Because once we get the mica powder on, we do not want to fiddle around with it too much. I am going to take my um, clay adhesive and I'm just going to get a tiny bit of it. I'm going to get my little stick here and I want to put a little bit around here because this is kind of, actually, can I lift this up? Okay, that's perfect. All right, let me just put this right on the back of here. I want to make sure that this stone, come on, doesn't come out. There we go. So I just want to kind of get these up on the edges. Because you hate to go through all that work and then have your stone fall out on you. I'll get a little bit more in there. I don't want too much because I don't want it to overflow and kind of start popping all out and making a huge mess for me. Okay. Let's make sure you get it in there again, exactly the way it was, and then just repress that clay right back in there. And then that will seal completely and you don't have to worry about your stone. Okay, there, beautiful. All right, so my birds are down good. And I am going to do my um, branches. I'm actually gonna do green. And the reason I'm gonna do green is because I don't have brown, but I think it will look just as nice because it actually ends up it ends up giving it like a gold green, which is really cool. So I'm happy with that. So I am just going to go right over. And I want it to stay with the same color. So everything incorporates with those birds. I'm just going to make sure everything's pressed down properly. So it's not going to fall off. And I'm not going to do the back with mica powder um, right now because I think I may end up putting on another back to this. Um, if not, I could always paint it. So I will honestly make that decision after I see what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. These guys have these mica powders from Create Along. Let me know what kind of things you do with them because I think these are fantastic. And I just love how the color really stays vibrant after you bake them. Because sometimes I have had mica powders where you bake them and they really like get real dull. And it's kind of disappointing because you think you're going to have this beautiful bright, you know, kind of like... This is just so beautiful and bright and sometimes you put all this time and effort into creating something and then the thing comes out so dull and it's a little disappointing. So I'm curious on what you guys do with these particular mica powders if you have them. These are so pretty like this thing is coming out really really nice. Oh you see I forgot the vine there. I have to get my green out again. I missed the whole vine. And they clean up real nice. Like I'm just wiping my brush on um, a regular towel. 
and it's coming right off and then I could switch colors which is super nice now my final color and of course I'm going to do my blue this is where those flat edge and a flat edge really comes handy because now we're going to have all these little things we have to go in between or right around and we could edge it off real nice. These real, real tight areas, I'm just going to use my tiny brush and get right in there. That way I know I'm not going to get um, my mica powder on um, the other colors. You can actually put a little bit of this blue on the edges of the petals and it makes it look purple, which is pretty cool because I'm getting like some on the edges and I'm really liking the way it looks. Okay, so I'm finished with all my makeup powder. And I got to tell you guys, this is a very beautiful and stunning necklace. Let me show you guys up close. Look how gorgeous that looks. So pretty. So now I'm going to place this in my oven at 275. And I'm going to bake it for a full half hour. And then we'll come back and decide how exactly we want to finish this piece off. All right, guys, so my piece is out of the oven and I love it. I mean, look how gorgeous that came out. This is one of the prettiest pieces I have done. I think this blue mica powder is just so gorgeous. It's just ugh, absolutely stunning to me. What I want to do is I did decide I want to put a back on. So I re-rolled out my gray clay to the thickest setting. And I want to do something with the back. Normally I just take my sponge and I kind of, you know, mark it up and do that. But I think since this is such a pretty piece, I want to do flowers on the back. So first I want to make sure, okay. I wanted to make sure I had enough room. So I have just this roller and it has these beautiful flowers. So I'm just going to take it and I'm just going to kind of go right over and make sure that I have the same um, pressure on it. So all the flowers really show. Okay. Now carefully lift and then I'm going to take the back or take my cutter Oops. okay So for this to stay on, we need to put glue or clay adhesive on the back of this. So I have my Sculpey clay adhesive and I am just going to put that on the back of here. And I'm trying not to touch the front too, too much because that mica powder you know, still can smear. So I don't want to overdo that. So I'm just gonna kind of be very careful how I um, handle this piece. All right, let me wipe my fingers. And then I want to bring this over. And line up my middle and just bring that right over onto it and then 
I'm going to carefully just kind of put it over the edge a bit. And this is another, you know, this part you kind of want to be real careful with as well because you don't want to destroy all the flowers. So you just want to be gentle while you're doing this. Okay, once you're real happy with the way that your sides look, then we can move on to the next part, which is to use the mica powder on the back here. And I'm pretty happy with that, okay. So this time, I'm gonna kinda do like just a little blend in here. I wanna go a little bit different on this one. So it's mainly going to be blue, but I want to add and blend my reds together with the blue. So each one of these flowers, I'm just going to go right over and kind of just mix. And I'm not doing anything perfect here. I'm just going to kind of put it all over. Okay, so now onto the blue. This is where I think it's going to really like pop. I think this is going to be so pretty and I think it's going to make the piece look so nice. So I am just going to start adding this blue all over. So I'll kind of just go around that pink area. If you get some of the pink, that's okay, because it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's really neat about kind of doing this is like nothing has to be perfect because they're just being blended together. Okay, look at that. Isn't that beautiful. These mica powders really bring a piece to life. All right, so now I am once again going to stick this in for a half hour and then we'll come back and we will finish this off completely make sure you're getting your sides as well guys because um you don't want to forget those so check all of your piece before you put it in the oven because you don't want to uh oh um when you take it out of the oven so just kind of double check and make sure you got everything completely covered. So I'm just going to look over once again, make sure my piece is completely covered. It is. All right. So now I'm going to put this in the oven and then we'll be back. My piece is complete. All right, here is the back. Look how beautiful that looks. The front is just stunning. I am so happy with this front. So, so gorgeous. So the first thing I want to do is I did um, put my resin on the back of my earrings. And I did one hole. So I'm going to show you how I did that. And I just kind of lined it up right in the middle. So I just take, where's my little button? I just take this. And I kind of go right in the middle and then just go straight down and it'll drill right through. It goes right through the resin beautifully. You don't have to struggle. I mean, you saw how quick that is. So for the necklace, I'm going to actually do two parts here. So I'm going to go here and I'm not going close to the edge. You'll see right here is where I'm going to go because I want a nice, I want to make sure if I go to the edge, I'm not going too close. Otherwise, it'll break. And then all that hard work is just ruined. So go right through. There's my little brush. Get that out of there. There we go. And I'm going to...
I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I want to do resin on the front, but I want to do Sculpey Glaze on the back. And the resin I'm going to use is my Tiny Pandora brush on. And this dries super, super fast. I love it. It's simple and easy to use. So I'm just going to get my um, resin and just go right over everything. And this resin is going to bring this piece to life. You're Wait till you see how beautiful and shiny this is going to be because the mica powder is already so shiny. And then when you put resin on top or any kind of glaze, it just really pops. So I'm avoiding my stone. I'm not getting my stone. I'm going around it. And the reason I'm getting or doing resin on the top is because with the bird, I kind of um, baked it first. So there are little gaps and this will assure me that it's not going to break off anyway. Or um, it's not going to break off at all. And I don't mind, I will go over my holes because my drill will go right through that. So I'm not worried about that. I just like to drill my holes ahead of time, kind of so I have an idea of where it is, where or where I want to put everything. It just makes it easier for me. But it definitely is not necessary. It's not something you have to do. Just beautiful. I mean, I'm so happy with this. I think this is just so gorgeous. All right, so now I'm going to put this under my UV light. And let me, I normally don't have to worry about too many bubbles when I brush it on, but just in case, come on, there we go. We'll just go over it just to make sure I didn't get any bubbles in there. You don't want to go through all that hard work and then have a hidden bubble that is really noticeable. Okay, so I think we're good. So let's put this under the light. And while that is under the light, we will work on our earrings. So the first thing we're gonna get is our jump rings. All right, so we're gonna go with a medium hoop because they are a little bit further down. I'm gonna get my pliers. And these are super easy to put together. So all you do is get your jump ring, open it up a little bit further. And then you just slip on, slip them right in the hole. And I want to take my little hoop down here and I'm going to turn it. So this way it's facing the other direction. And then I'm going to make sure that this part that goes in your ear is facing the back of the earring. So it lays in your ear properly. Put that on. And then you just close it. And there is your earring. And how beautiful is that? Just absolutely stunning. So, so beautiful. So the top is completely cured. So now I'm gonna do the back side, but I am going to do the Sculpey Glaze. And the reason I'm doing the Sculpey Glaze and not the resin is because somebody actually told me that some people have a reaction to resin against their skin. So I wanna make sure that that's not gonna be the case. So when this is laying against somebody's skin, they will not have a issue. So I'm just gonna go over this. 
and I will let this completely dry. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, I will get all my fit-ins and everything together. So this way we can come back and put this piece together. Okay, guys, so while that is drying, I pulled out my chain and I want this necklace to be real close up to the neck. So that's normally, I would say about 12 inches, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to take my chain, I wrap it around my neck, the back of it, and then I kind of hang it where I like my um, pendant to lay. So that's what I'm gonna do, and that's gonna determine how long I actually need this piece. So, my inches are up here. So it says about 16, but I know I'm gonna want it just a tad bit shorter. So I'm gonna go with 14 because the top will be at the 14 and then it scoops down. So I'm gonna cut seven and seven. Because you also have the little extra with the jump ring and then the clasp and things like that. So I'm going to stop right there. It's a 12. I'm going to cut that. Maybe I'll cut that. <laughs> Come on, e. There we go. Do the same thing on this side. And I'm not gonna cut the second one yet because I need to see how this is going to lay first. There, that just opens up, that's nice, okay. those off to the side so that'll be my main two and then I'm gonna have to wait till it's completely dry before I can do the next one so they're the same so now I'm gonna get my clasp and everything ready so I am going to get my extra jump rings here And one end, and I'm gonna use a big one to actually be able to um, close it up. Cause I always, you know, as I get older, I'm finding it really hard for my fingers to find these little, you know, jump rings to connect my necklaces. And I know I cannot be the only person. So I'm gonna use a bigger jump ring just because I think it's going to help a lot to be able to find it and close the necklace. I'm gonna get my clasp. And I don't need a large jump ring for that. So I'll just get my small one here. And I can, oops, oops, oops. Well, we'll get another one because I just lost that. forever losing my jump rings. Like they just are all over my floor. Then I have to go searching for them. So let me get my smaller jump ring here. Put my clasp on. And then 
close that completely and now those are ready. Let me check on my piece. It's a little bit still wet. So I'll give it a few more minutes and then we will put this whole thing together. Okay guys, so I noticed I did something. When I was drilling my holes, I didn't look to make sure they measured up. So this one was way down here. So what I am going to do to cover up my mistake and use guys, if you have any mistakes like this, you could do the same. So I am actually going to use these little tiny facets that are from Create Along as well. And I chose pink because the little flowers are pink. And I am going to get some super glue. And I am going to put little dots of glue in different areas on here. And then I am just gonna put those pieces on there. So I'm going to super glue all these little pieces on here. So make sure when you're drilling your holes, you're looking to see that everything is even because I obviously did not do that. And now I have to do this but I think this is gonna look really cute. So I'm not totally sad about it. All right, and once that completely dries, to ensure that everything will stay on, I will do one more coat of my resin because I hate to go through all this work and then have these little guys pop off of my mistake so i do want to clean this up because i got a lot of glue on this particular one so let me clean this up there we go so i'll give that a few minutes to completely dry i'll resin it completely again uv light it and then we'll come back and complete it completely. All right, guys, so while this is drying, I came over and I looked at this and you can see, so I think I have an idea how to fix this and I'm hoping it's gonna work. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some of my Sculpey glaze and I am just going to take a little bit of my mica powder put it in there and then i'm going to mix this and hopefully i could get this to kind of be able to fill in that area that has a hole or at least hide it so that's my goal is to really just hide it. So I wanna mix this up. And then I am, oh, right here. And I'm gonna go right over here. And I want to see And I'm hoping that that will dry and I kind of push it in that hole. And I'm hoping that it'll dry that little bit up. Like I can't even really see it now. So we'll have to wait and see 
how it dries. But I'm really, really hoping it dries and seals that hole completely. So we will see. So I'm gonna lay that down there. All right, guys, I gotta tell you, that is the best mistake I have ever made. These little facets from Create Along just completely completed this um, pendant or necklace. Absolutely, I mean 100%. Look how gorgeous that looks. You can see it slightly, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'm gonna play around with it after the video and see if I could fix it a little bit more. I'm thinking maybe if I add a little pink in that area too, it might fix it, or I may just leave it alone. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I'll figure that out. I mean, for now, it doesn't look terrible. I think it's, you know, it's pretty hidden. So I'm okay with that, but this, how beautiful. This is really honestly one of my favorite pieces now. All right, so what we need to do is make sure our holes are completely open. So I'm just going to go over each hole again, make sure everything is open and ready for my jump rings. Oh, see that one is completely sealed. There we go. I'll just get my brush and brush off all that little extra. And then I am going to start out with the top and see what we need for the bottom um, after we do this. So I want this piece on here first. So putting this together really is simple. All right, so now I need to figure out what I need to finish this piece here. So my question is, do I want to double chain it like this, which would look fabulous, or do I wanna do a halfway mark, which I don't really like. So I'm gonna go this way. So for me to figure out exactly what I'm going to need, I am going to do it the easiest way and I am going to connect this because trust me, I have done this so many times trying to measure and cut and learn that it does not work correctly every time. So I learn that in order to make it work, the easiest way to do it is just connect it and work right off of everything. So you're gonna pull your necklace exactly how it has to be. So when you're wearing it, it's gonna be like that. And right, this is the one I have to take off. So open that up. Take the, oh, reclose that piece that opened up. Let's close that up. Make sure that's closed all the way. I think that's supposed to go under it. Okay. Put that on. And then we will close that. Oops. And let's make sure that lays right. I don't want it to be too loose. And I feel like I could go one lower. So let me go one lower. Put 
There we go. Yeah, that works much nicer. Sometimes having that little one extra really kind of destroys it. So you just got to be careful on how you do it. All right, so now we're going to open this guy up. chain oops and we're going to come back down okay let's check that make sure that lays nicely and look how beautiful. I just want to try it on quick and make sure that, oops, that it lays right. Okay, so this one actually needs one more taken off. Slightly, just a tad bit too long. And it's funny because it, you don't really notice it until you put it on and what i want to do is i'm actually going to add an extra little ring here so that is not in the way i don't like all that chain be in there when you go to put the hoop on or go to connect it. I think this came out gorgeous. I mean, what a beautiful set. I really hope you guys enjoyed creating this with me. Um, it was a nice little surprise to me <laughs> to see how this came out, considering I wasn't even planning on making this necklace. And if you guys did enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Put all the details in the link for Create Along, and I hope you guys have a beautiful day. See you next time. Bye!